Hello YouTube, Bradley Harmon here. We are on Lake Hartwell in South Carolina, right on the Georgia, South Carolina border. We're here for the second stop of the Bassmaster Open uh, Eastern Division. Um, this is a blueback herring lake. Really excited to be here. I've had a lot of experience on blueback herring lakes through the years. Um, I've actually been here one time before, but it was only during the spawn. Um, did a lot of sight fishing, and uh, so this is going to be a new experience. Uh, it's going to be a lot of chasing top water. Oh, that's so awesome! Cane piles, brush piles, Carolina rig dragging, spooking and fluking. Um, lots of fun, lots of fun. So hopefully today we'll get a few bites. You guys will get a see, follow along, and uh, let's get to it. that's fixing to go down is really cool this is the very first start of the morning like this i got there a day earlier than what i planned um it's in the weekend i've got i've got i got to go back and get mccoy because we're supposed to film a couple of videos for bassmaster on tips and stuff for them to use so i've really only got a couple of hours and i run out there and if you notice the weather is like really popping like there's wind and there's cloud cover and these fish are really aggressive we just showed up for practice they haven't been beat on and what this video is about is about how i did not have the right cricket for this tournament like i jump right smack dab in the middle of these suckers and i've got a lot of things figured out in the very first hour that i'm there what happens throughout this video as you're going to watch is is that even though I'm on the fish and I've got the right stuff in this clear water situation, they become much more finicky after the pressure and the weather changes. When the sun comes out and it gets slick and the, and the wind's not blowing, you're going to see me struggle with some of these same baits that earlier in the week. It was easy. So uh, you guys enjoy the video. I just want to stop for a second. You're really going to like this part right here. Hang on. Those fish are just stupid aggressive whenever you get around them and the trigger's on. And uh, that was a really cool deal. I really, really like that a lot.
All right, that's the end of day one. It was a pretty uneventful day. Um, we did some filming today. We made a couple of videos for uh, Bassmaster. So that kind of got away a little bit of my practice today. Um, almost went all the way to dark. Um, started at dark, finishing at dark, dark to dark. Um, you guys will see the double. It's really cool. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen that already. I've got to get some braid taken off. I do not like the braid on that topwater bait with the with the treble hooks. I never have liked that. Um, it performs really well, but I hate how the braid gets hung up in the hooks all the time. Braid is constantly, constantly getting hung up in the hooks. And the rod is honestly a little bit too stiff. It's on an Amistad extra heavy. Even though it's a pencil popper and a big bait, it's a little bit much. The braid gets over the tip of the hook and then it goes down between the line and like, you basically just have to cut it off every time and retie it. And I'm tired of doing that. So also tomorrow I want to tie on a, I like to try a double fluke rig. I need to find out about that. Todd said something about it might not be legal. Uh, we've always thrown them here before. I don't know why it wouldn't be. And uh, I've got a couple other ideas and things that I want to try. So you guys hang in there and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. This was the moment that I made a decision on something that I've done in the past that has worked out. It ended up being incorrect. And I want to point it out to you, it's all part of that cricket. So the braid to the top water bait, guys, um, while yes, it does create a lot of problems, I should have gone to a fluorocarbon leader, potentially just a little short one foot or two foot leader. Um, and I say fluorocarbon, monofilament. Um, just to prevent that, that braid from getting in those hooks. The reason that I say this is, is as this tournament gets deeper, I did change to mono and I did go to a softer rod. Um, probably should have gone to the softer rod, but stayed with braid. I had a co-angler um, one of the two days that was with me and um, I believe it was on day two. And he caught three fish behind me, um, which is no big deal. It's just that I had thrown a couple of casts across some of the points and stuff that he was getting bit, out, bit on. And uh, we got to notice him. He'd throw his top water, I'd throw my top water. And the side by side, his just was a real hard jerk, whereas mine was more soft, flush going back and forth. And that was really, we were throwing the exact same baits. And I couldn't get over how crisp his bait just pop, 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 pop when we'd both make casts. I mean, it got to the point where like he would make a cast and I would kind of throw in parallel with him so I could watch the two. And uh, I asked him, I said, do you have that on braid? And he said, yeah. I said, let me borrow your rod for just a second. We you swap me rods? And he said, yeah. Cause I mean, I'm just up there just jerking as hard as I can to make mine try to match what his is doing because it is obvious that the fish like the action of his better than mine. And, uh, I'm up there just jerking real hard and I can't make it do it. So I change rods with him. We swap rods and uh, just barely hitting his on that braid. And it's just ta, 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 ta. So I sit down, I, I reached in my rod box and I got a reel out that had braid and I changed it up and I went to braid and it made a huge difference in bites um, for the rest of that part of the day. And uh, it's something that I didn't have the first day of the tournament. I wished I would have. Um, just something to pay attention to that the, the fish just we're talking little things guys it's always just little minute things that sometimes make a huge difference that's what this channel is about it's teaching you guys how to fish that's why i take these timeouts i do my videos different than some of the other guys they're not vlogs they're not travel um I, i'm trying to teach you things that i'm seeing that i'm learning as well um i know it's the little things and it took me too long to catch on to this and part of that's because you know we practice or i practice primarily by myself all the time and um, I, I just don't, I don't see these kinds of things. So I should have tried it in, in practice. Um, hindsight, if I went back and did it over with again, I was on a blueback carrying lake, I believe I would try to start off with, um, I would try braid and use like a two foot floor, uh, monofilament leader. And the mono is just enough. It, it doesn't even have to be two foot, dude. It could be a foot. It really could probably be six inches, but just enough where that braid's not continuously hanging up in the hooks. And then you would still, with that braid has no stretch, Whereas the monofilament stretching so much each time you twitch the rod, it's just hard to give it that really live action, especially on really, really, really long casts. 
And uh, the braid also, you know, when you go down to a 30 pound or a 40 pound braid, it's a very small diameter and you can make really, really, really long casts with it, which is usually really important on these blueback herring lakes, especially the ones that are really clear like Hartwell. So just throw that out there and uh, we'll carry on. So parking is not good here. Look, we got a boat, a boat, another boat over there, another boat up there, a boat there. Boat Scott's there. camera. Yeah, got a boat boat there. There. There's boats everywhere. There's boats everywhere. I don't know if my extension cord's long enough. Where'd y'all go, man? Do what? Grace, and Kate there too. Yeah, Grace is here. Where's Grace and Karen's on staff. Where's Kate? Kate's over there talking about Your mom is a pushover. I know. Don't let her know that. There's me in charge. You wouldn't see that kind of thing. Hello. Hey, Bradley. This is uh, Brian Mastercard. Doing good. How you doing? Look who I done picked up. He found me. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Sent a little bird. <laughs> I get a phone call from South Carolina, and I was like, I wonder who that is. I thought the governor was calling you for a fishing license. Be <laughs> like, hey, man, will you come tow me in? Uh -oh. Yeah. Fishing's a... Uh, not good right now, but we're trying at least entertaining ourselves right now. It is not good for me either. I didn't caught one today. I am neither. I, I take that back. As soon as I broke down, I put my troll motor on high and I caught two 12 inches. Sounds Within right. like 100 yards of each other. They ain't had a bite all day. That's it. My day has been lacking to say the least. I keep thinking the farther I'm going to go up this thing, the better it's going to get, but it doesn't get any better. You look like a man that's tired of dealing with his shenanigans your whole life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody, got everybody going, sir. That's a slow. Good luck, B-Lat. All right, same to you, my man. Thank you again, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, Anytime, man. Well, we discovered where we're not going in this tournament. It's always one benefit when it sucks that bad. We know where we're not going. We're not going up the Tugela River. No. That's a promise. I don't have a good feeling about this derby. Like, this feels like Struggleville. It really does. All right, guys, in my typical usual self, um, I had some camera difficulties on day one of this tournament. Um, I started recording right when I got to the lake and somewhere in the dark, um, I had a power failure with my cable that I had and it was the only one I had in the boat. So the entire day was out the window, it wasn't gonna happen. Um, I pulled up the results. Um, Day one, I had five fish for 11 pounds and eight ounces. But here, here's where I really ran into the problem. I caught eight fish on day one of the tournament. I hooked up and landed eight bass. I had 42 blow ups, I counted them. Literally blow up on my bait. Um, did not have the right cricket at all. There were, there were other baits out there that, um, a fluke being one of them uh, that I wish I would have spent more time playing with in practice because as you guys have seen and a couple of days of practice there and I, I didn't carry a camera one day when I was using the uh, blue back herring and the live scope and chasing those fish. I, I really had it ironed out. I, I knew the area of the lake that I wanted to fish which ended up being a very productive area of the lake just didn't have the right cricket and and i stayed with some of the bigger top waters i'm not saying that i didn't throw a fluke i did but i didn't throw it as much as i should have um it was really really important because these fish would come up like i say and blow up on it they're getting there at the bait and then realizing at the last second that it's not what they want and um, it's a big lesson that i took away from this thing and that clear water impoundment of how big a deal the right cricket can be um, just a minute change, something small, um, like I told you guys with the braid, which you're about to see in this upcoming video, which is on day two. 
um, makes a big difference. So uh, I sized down in baits. I went to um, the little small I'm a walking stick, which is a popular bait and those fish have seen a lot, which still created a lot of problems. Um, but you guys are gonna see that in, in the end of this event. So <clears throat> hang on, sorry for the lost day. There wasn't anything I could do about it. I was already on the water. You know, they're calling boat numbers and I, 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 can't, I, I can't do anything. So here it is and uh, you guys hang on. Perfect. Bradley Hallman in boat number 19. Oh, news wrap. Andrew Upshaw right in front of you. 19. Rich Hobbs in boat 25. 310. Yep, call that pig. big this morning because the wind the weather's not right this could be part of it okay so like in the morning yeah they're uh, on my graph you know i see fish everywhere up high in the water column you know yeah roaming and searching and that may be why it may be why that i'm of the little one works in the morning because you're not having to call them from so far down they can see it yeah. But then later in the day when the sun gets up, you don't see all those fish up in the air like that. shot but he broke me off in the pile mm. Tree. There's 20 of them, and the littlest one in the bunch got it. Oh, hell. I just had one earlier. It was like four or five pounds come out of a tree and just freaking smoke it. Won't get it. Won't get it. 
I think I'm not supposed to be fishing this thing. <laughs> we'll go home and lick our wounds. Well, that is the end of day two of Lake Hartwell. Um, not a good day. Um, I didn't get very many bites. Uh, yesterday I had like 40 bites. Today I probably had 15. And yesterday out of 40, I put eight in the boat. And today out of 15 bites, I put seven or eight in the boat. So that part was better. Um, I went to the smaller Ima today and uh, my coiner was throwing his on braid and it was a big difference. Um, I know you wouldn't think that the line, but the fact that it's braid and has no stretch allowed that thing to pop a little harder. And um, I noticed it this morning on his bait and it sounded better. And so I switched and changed and it made a difference for me too. So um, caught a limit both days. Um, this lake is stingy. Um, I knew that we were gonna go over and over on some of the same fish and we did. Um, they, uh, a lot of boats just rotating some of the same points. It's kind of herring fishing. It's kind of, you know, um, it, it, it's the norm for sure. Man, all I really needed was just, you know, another 11, 12 pounds and I, I'm inside the top 30 and get check and, and have a pretty good tournament. So I'm gonna come up a little bit short of that. It's okay, we still got two left. I'm still okay on the Eastern. Um, I'm gonna have to have two really good tournaments to finish the year if I wanna make get those spots, but uh, we still got a shot. And the colder it gets, the better I get because the fish will get shallower and shallower. I think we've got a river left and, and, uh, and Cherokee. So um, I've done well on both those places in the past. So looking forward to both those tournaments. All right, everybody's rolling in. Castle Dine's in, Andrew's in. Andrew's gonna make the top 10 is what I think. He had uh, 14 something yesterday and he's got 13 today. Um, I really look for him to make the top 10. Congratulations Upshaw. Um, if you do, I knew somebody in our house was gonna make it. Scott hasn't weighed in yet. He was in third yesterday. Um, I predicted that going into this event that somebody in our house would make the top 10. Figured it was coming and uh, it looks like it is. So, all right guys, that's all I got for you from Hartwell. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'm out of here.